Welcome back today, Franks, to our devotional study. We are in Genesis chapter 17, and uh, as we come into Genesis 17 today, we have seen uh, God change Abram's name to Abraham, and uh, we have also seen how God has uh, enlarged the covenant that he had made with Abram and stated very clearly that this was an everlasting covenant, that it was an unconditional covenant, that God was going to do this. Um, regardless of what happened, um, God would fulfill his promise. It was not a conditional one, which when in a conditional covenant, God said to the people, if you do this, then I will do this. But this was a covenant that God made with no conditions whatsoever. We also see that God gave a sign of the covenant, and that is circumcision. And we want to look at that today in Genesis chapter 17 verses 9 through 14. It says, And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall, shall be circumcised. And ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man-child in your generations. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man-child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people he hath broken my covenant. So as we come into these verses, we see here circumcision, which is the sign of the covenant that God makes with Abraham here in this passage. Now, of course, we know that this is the circumcision of the males and that this is a token of the covenant that God is making or that God has made with Abraham. And as we think about this particular uh, covenant, there's a number of things that we need to be reminded of and that we need to understand today. First of all, uh, as we come into this, keep in mind that this, is, this token is a symbol, that it is a flag or a beacon, a monument, so to speak. Now, as we look into verse 9, we see that this command that God is given regarding circumcision is something that is to be expected and it is something that is to be obeyed. Uh, Abraham was obligated to obey it. And whenever God gives us an order, whenever God gives a precept or a command, uh, it is important for us to know as the people of God that it is not something that we are to negotiate. It is not something that we are to figure out whether or not we want to obey it or whether or not we don't want to obey it. The truth of the matter is, when God gives us a command, when God gives us a directive, we are commanded, we are expected to obey it. It's not just something that we are to do if it's convenient for us. Friends, when God gives a command, it is to be obeyed. And we see as we move into verse 11 here, that circumcision was a sign or a token of the covenant. Circumcision was something that was done for identification. It was to indicate who the covenant people were. Circumcision distinguished the Jews apart from other people. As a matter of fact, the Jews referred to their heathen nation neighbors as those who were the uncircumcised. So we see there uh, the importance of this covenant. It was a very important part of the covenant from the standpoint of the responsibility of Abraham and his seed. Circumcision, you know, some would practice it today for hygienic reasons or things of that nature, but it was used, uh, it, it, it was something that came about of the Jewish people. And we need to understand that its origins are among the Jewish people. That, that, uh, um, that circumcision was something that they made, that they did to mark themselves and identify themselves as the people of God. But it's also important for us to understand that, that circumcision nor any other work that a person can do does not save a person. They were not saved because they were circumcised. As a matter of fact, listen to what Paul says in Romans chapter 4. Verses 9 through 12, it says, Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, 
or upon the uncircumcision also. For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How was it then reckoned? In other words, how was faith applied to the account of Abraham? How was it then reckoned? When he was in, when he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Keep in mind, this is Genesis chapter 17, that circumcision comes into effect. In Genesis chapter 15, in verse 6, it says, Abraham believed God, and it was counted to him for righteousness. It was his belief in God. It was his believing God that put righteousness on his account, not circumcision. And then in verse 11, it says he received, in Romans 4.11, he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith, which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed on them also. And the father of the circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of the faith of our Father Abraham, which he had being yet uncircumcised. So that verse reminds us that Abram was righteous because of his faith, not because of his circumcision, and that he was righteous, he was declared righteous even before he was circumcised. Circumcision was a sign of the covenant that God made with Abram. Now, with that being said, who were to be circumcised? Notice verses 12 and 13. It says, and he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you, every man, child, in your generation. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised and my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. So who were to be circumcised in this passage? The Bible makes it very clear that it was to be every man-child that was in Abram's house, and beyond that, every person that was born that was a male when they were eight days of age. Now, there were two serious problems that were present in circumcision, bleeding and infection. Both of those things were a great risk when circumcision was to, be, was to take place. And it's interesting that medical authorities have discovered that on the eighth day, of the newborn male child, the blood clogging and the infection fighting agents in the blood are at their combined best. You know, it's interesting, if they had simply read the Word of God, they would have known that. The Word of God was way ahead of the medical people, for this fact was not discovered until the 1940s, but the Word of God reported it some 4,000 years before that, in this passage that we read here, that the circumcision should happen to the males on the 8th day. And then we see here the penalty for disobedience in verse 14. It says, the uncircumcised man-child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He hath broken my covenant. You know, the judgment here was the exclusion from the temporal blessings of the covenant. It was not a judgment of eternal damnation where some people try to make this matter of circumcision a matter of salvation, and that is not the truth. This had nothing to do with their salvation. But if a Jewish person chose not to be circumcised according to the Abrahamic covenant, they were excluding themselves from the temporal blessings that God had given in this covenant. And uh, we're going to see how God continues to bless Abraham and how God continues to give him wonderful promises as Abraham does that which God asks of him. You know, friends, this, the matter is simple. And we've already dealt with this in this chapter. But when we want the blessings of God upon our life, we need to live our lives according to the pattern that's laid out in the Word of God. I can't live my life any way that I choose. Disregard God and then expect the blessing of God upon my life. I need to listen to him, yield to him, and follow him in all matters of faith and practice. Tomorrow as we come back together, we're going to see what the how the Lord promises to bless Abram with the child of promise, Isaac. And we will see that as we look into our study tomorrow. I trust that you're obeying God in the areas that he's instructed you in so that God can bless you the way he wants to bless you. Have a great day.